If you're looking for ways to prioritize your health and fitness, run more efficiently, understand food, and somehow fit it all into a fun and family-centered life, you're in the right place. This is the Real Life Runners Podcast, and we're your hosts, Kevin and Angie Brown. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now let's get running. Everybody, thank you so much again for joining us today on this episode of the Real Life Runners podcast. We are your hosts, Angie and Kevin Brown. Hey, everybody. Very, very excited for today's episode because today we're going to continue the background of how we got to be the runners that we are, how we got to the point where we want to share our love for running because not all of us started with a love for running. That is true. I definitely did not start with a love for running. So um, I guess we'll just jump into my story now. Um, I actually hated running growing up in high school. I've always been athletic. Um, but I was always like into team sports like volleyball, basketball, and softball, and I would never, ever consider myself a runner. I actually hated running um, when I was in high school because running in high school was always punishment for us. It was always, you know, when we missed a serve in volleyball, we'd have to go run a lap of the track, or in basketball, we'd have to do suicides, uh, liner, you know, we called them suicides because it was like death running, you know, it was just, running was always just punishment and conditioning. It was like the boring stuff that I had to do. In order to play the sports that I actually wanted to play. Which just cracks me up because through my whole childhood, like from from soccer, when it, soccer was still just that swarm of kids, you knew where the ball was because there were 12 kids around it. That part of practice where it was run to that fence and back or one to that tree and back, that was the highlight for me. No, that was the least favorite part for me. Like I literally did not even try out for soccer in middle school because there was too much running involved. That was the only part that I was good at. Then they would take the ball <laughs> out and I'd be like, ah, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was kind of, you know, how I started in high school, unlike Mr. Cross Country Star over here. Um, and you know, also I was always active. I was like, you know, a varsity athlete and stuff, but I was still always a little overweight. And, um, so then I got to college and gained, you know, even more weight. You know, they always talk about the freshman 15. Mine was more like the freshman 20 plus. Um, and so, you know, being up at school, in college, I, you know, I just started not feeling great. And so I started to go work out. And, um, you know, so I guess I started running sometime in college to just go out for a run. And that basically included me going to the gym and either going on the elliptical or the treadmill. And the treadmill was definitely not my first choice. Well, no, I mean, it's not even the first choice of people who really love running. Like runners who love it still call it the dreadmill because it's not the most entertaining way to run. Yeah. Go out and enjoy nature. That's the best way to do it. But Yeah, but when you go to college in northern Indiana and it's like 20 <laughs> degrees outside, I'm from Florida. Like I can't go outside and run in 20 when, degree weather. When nature is covered in two feet of white stuff. It's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, what are you even supposed to wear in your feet? Like, I don't know. Like, I can't do that. I don't know. The first time I saw snow within three hours I had cross country practice and was I had 12 miles in the middle of a blizzard oh my so god that's <laughs> awful yeah I mean I remember just like bundling up to go to the gym was like oh god do I really want to do this and I actually started doing like um some videos like Ty Bo and stuff like Billy Blanks like all nice. up in <laughs> good work <laughs> just so I didn't have to leave the dorm no if you could exercise without leaving the dorm that was a win when yeah. it was that cold outside yeah but it wasn't wasn't really anything that I was kind of committed to so um so anyway so I started kind of running in college but I you know maybe I did a couple 5k's like for the dorm you know we would sponsor a 5k every year I, I did that with like my roommates and stuff but it wasn't you know I wouldn't really call that too much running um, and then, uh, I met this boy and he was pretty cute and he was a runner and he really, really loved running. And I was like, Hmm, this kid, I'm not sure what's wrong with this kid. Why does he like running so much? Yeah. I don't know about that kid. Yeah. I mean, obviously he wasn't that weird cause I ended up marrying him. But, hey, um, <laughs> hey, I know that guy. So, I mean, you know, when I first, when I first met you, that's really when I started kind of running. Um, and I still didn't run a lot, but I, I ran a lot more than I was running as Know, probably more of a way to connect with you at that point in time. Um, and 
you know, I remember one of the first things that you did for me to help me like feel better with running was you put me in an actual pair of running shoes, which I had never had before. Like, you know, I always wore whatever was on sale or whatever looked cute or, or whatnot, but I never had like an actual real pair of running shoes that were good for me and my feet and body. I mean, most summers during college, I spent selling running shoes. And so when you said, oh, no, I I run and I run in these. And it was this sweet pair of worn out cross trainers, all gray. Trail shoes. Oh, yeah. They were all gray and there was nothing left to the bottom of them. I'm like, wait, you can't you can't run in those. That's going to be awful. And it was awful. And every run was awful and painful. And um, when you actually put me in a, a good pair of running shoes, Uh, suddenly, you know, every run wasn't pure torture. I mean, it was torture for other reasons in my brain, but not, you know, but it actually didn't feel as bad. And I actually started to kind of like it a little bit. Um, And, you know, so that kind of transitioned, you know, into um, grad school. And when I went to grad school for physical therapy, I mean, the people that I was surrounded with were all very fit people, Um, you know, just I think physical therapists in general are are a little bit more active um, versus like the general population. And so it was just kind of the culture. Like after we'd be in class all day, my roommates and I would go to the gym and we'd jump on the treadmills or we'd lift weights and we'd all work out for an hour or so before we went home and, you know, did our homework and whatever. So it was just kind of the group that I was in. It was just what we did. And um, it also, you know, I also wanted to keep my weight in check and, and whatnot. But again, always active, but still a little overweight. And I always thought running, you know, runners were skinny. So I always thought running would be good for me. But I mean, even when I was in grad school, I decided to do a triathlon. And um, the triathlon was very intriguing for me because it broke up the monotony of running. Because even at that point, I wasn't like a huge runner. Like I was like, oh, swim, bike and run. That kind of breaks up you know, the boringness of the run part. <laughs> yeah, I remember you were very excited about that whole idea that, that the whole race wasn't just going and running. You're right. like, hey, have you ever considered a triathlon? I'm like, no. Yeah. No. Okay, maybe as a group where I could just do the third leg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so even at that point in grad school, I wasn't like, I would, I, I wouldn't really call myself a runner really. Um, and then, uh, you know, fast forward another couple of years and you and I got married and as newlyweds and, you know, we both had our, our first full-time jobs. And so after work, we would just meet at the gym and, um, you know, we'd jump on the treadmills again because it was a way for us to kind of work out together because you and I run at very different paces and, um, you know, if we got on the treadmills together, it was almost like we were running together, but you could go at your pace and I could go at my pace about half as fast as you. It was a great way to be able to run because we would go and, you know, both head out for the day and and go off on a run outside, but you never got to see each other. Right. You know, on a day where you've worked all day and you want to actually talk to that person that you just got married to, hey, why don't we find treadmills next to each other? Yeah. It was, it made for, it was some of my favorite running. It really has been some of my favorite was miles and miles on a treadmill as long as I was on a treadmill next to you oh you're so sweet um so yeah so that was like a a way that we you know I think connected even further you know like as as newlyweds and then um then I got pregnant and um during pregnancy number one I was very active I was definitely still running I mean I ran until I was 30 33 weeks pregnant and then I had some sciatic pain that started to flare up a bit um but I was still running, you know, I would say, I don't know, even at that point, I'm not sure if I would call myself a runner, you know, people would find out that we were both, you know, that we would run, people would see us like in the gym on the treadmills together, like, oh, that's so cute, you guys are, you know, runners, and you get to run together, and I'm like, okay, yeah, but in the back of my head, like, I still wasn't defining myself as a runner, because in the back of my head, I was still slow or and I hadn't done a marathon or a half marathon or you know I'd done a couple 5k's here and there but like I didn't really consider myself a runner like you were a runner it was tricky because your first like major running influence was me and I was coming at it from a whole nother background so it took a while for you to really accept the title yeah no I I'm a runner that's one of the things I do I am a runner yeah it was a long time yeah I did and um you know so after pregnancy number one obviously came baby number one and um with baby number one I I started working out you know pretty 
pretty soon after like I got cleared by the doctor you know at that six week mark I remember like being ready to get out there and start running and walking and stuff again so I was pretty motivated to get back in shape and lose the baby weight and stuff and um and that's you know you did your first marathon no half marathon half marathon half marathon when she was like three months old and and it it just looked awesome. I mean, you did great in it. You got second place. That was my fastest one ever. Yeah, that was awesome. And um, and so then I was kind of like, you know, just surrounded by the that energy and everything at the half marathon. I think, you know, we were kind of sitting at dinner one night and I was like, I wonder if I should do a half marathon. And, and, and I said, yes, yes, you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that it was kind of like maybe my way of like actually accepting the title of runner you know, like I felt like maybe if I do a half marathon that I'll actually believe that I'm a runner at that point in time. Right. Cause I kept trying to tell you you're a runner, you're a runner and yeah. it just never clicked to you. I don't think so. And so, um, you know, when our first one was about a year and a half, that's when I decided to start training for my first half marathon. And, uh, I ran that when she was like two, she had just turned two. And uh, that was in December of that year, and I felt I felt great. Like, I had so much fun doing that half marathon, and, like, I hit the time that I wanted to hit, and everything was, like, really good. I, like, my, my goal was to finish that one. Like, I didn't really have a certain time. I, I kind of did, but, you know, I wasn't going to be too upset if I couldn't hit it. Um, and so then I was, like, I had so much fun. I was, like, right away started, like, okay, maybe I should run a second half marathon in the spring, you know. And then two weeks later, I found out that I was pregnant with baby number two. So you actually really did that first marathon or first half marathon pregnant. Um, I think, she, uh, yeah, I guess if you count backwards, I yeah. might have been. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so then pregnancy number two, I mean, that was just completely different than pregnancy number one. I mean, with, with number one, I was so active and was at the gym, you know, basically at least probably five days a week. And with pregnancy number two, I had a two-year-old and um, a job and a husband and mommy guilt. And uh, so pregnancy number two, I was not that active. I mean, I worked out here and there, but I was definitely not consistent. And, um, you know, same thing after she was born. After she was born, it was it was even worse, you know. I mean, I was just I was making every excuse in the book. I wasn't working out consistently. I'd I'd run here and there. I'd work out here and there, but I had no, no sort of pattern because I just felt like I had so much to do. You know, I mean, the, between the the nursing and, and you're giving your body to another human being, like I just felt like I didn't have anything left for myself most of the time. And on those times that I did actually, you know, have the time or have the energy to go out for a run, when I'd walk out the door, both, I would have both kids crying and saying, mommy, don't leave, don't leave. Like, I mean, I remember it so distinctly, like trying to leave and they're clinging to my legs and crying and, and you're like, no, 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 go, go. You know, I got this, I got this. And I, I close the door behind me and I just hear them wailing, you know, and it's just. Sometimes that was me. <laughs> And it, but I mean, it just, it broke my heart and it made me feel so guilty for, for taking that time away from them. I know it's, it's such a tough time. And, and I think most runners have some period where you know, running just takes a back burner yeah. because, and the train just gets very scattered because you have to focus on something else. And at that time it was important to focus on, you know, two itty bitty ch children. Absolutely. You weren't going to, you weren't going to not spend that time with them. Right. You were still running. It just wasn't as consistent as you wanted it yeah, to be. But it, I mean, it was so inconsistent. It was, I mean, there would be like months in between my runs, like, you know, once a month or, you know, maybe I'd have like a cluster of a couple and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to start getting back in the routine now. And yeah, then, th oh, this will be the week. And yeah. then, you know, then a kid would get sick. Right. Or something would go wrong right. and, and they're you're right back off the, off the slope. Exactly. And, um, so, you know, so that was kind of where it was for almost three years. And after she was born, it was just excuses and inconsistency. And then, um, then I hurt my back and that was awful. I remember sitting at the kitchen table holding the, you know, the second baby and, um, I just went to stand up. And I was holding her and I just felt an immediate sharp, sharp pain in my lower back like someone had just stabbed me with a knife. And I sat right back down and I handed her off to you and I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I was so scared because 
you you kind of made this noise and just like moved the kid towards me. I'm yeah. like, oh no, like she she broke her back, and, right. <laughs> I, and she's giving me a kid. The kids right. kids not not happy with it. You're not happy. What's going on here? Yeah, and so then you know my brain starts going a million miles a minute trying to figure out what the heck just happened. I'm going through all my medical you know knowledge, like okay, is this a herniated disc? Is it an SI joint? What the heck is going on here? And um. And so that was, that was not good. I was just at a, at a point and, um, you know, they say doctors are the worst patients sometimes, you know, like I knew that I had hurt my back and I knew I needed to rehab it. But, um, again, inconsistency, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't devoting that time to myself and my back was, wasn't great. And I mean, it got a little bit better, um, you know, over the, over the coming weeks, but it still wasn't great. And then I just, I just started feeling so just out of it. Like I was out of shape. I started feeling flabbier. I wasn't, I did not feel good about my body at all. Um, and then I started getting like anxiety attacks, like not, not like attacks, but just like a lot of anxiety over like my health. And I'd have these episodes where I would like, my heart would start racing and I would be thinking like, Oh my gosh, am I having a heart attack? Am I going to die young? Like, it's just, it was terrible. Like my brain just, you know, obviously I'm an overthinker. Yeah. Your brain did not shut off. No. Like the, the physical just moved to a mental and everything going on was just not in a good place for yeah. you. And I think that's, you know, that's a common fear, even if people don't admit it. Like when you become a parent, like the fear of something happening to you and leaving your child behind, I mean, that's a real fear for a lot of people. That's a definite fear. Yeah. I mean, most people aren't going to speak it out loud, but that's definitely in your mind somewhere. Yeah. And so basically, um, last year, was it last year? Yeah. Last year. Yeah. It was last year. It was the beginning of last year in January of last year. Um, I just decided one day that I was, I was done. I was, I was over it. I I couldn't feel like this anymore. I needed to control my health and my anxiety levels and just my body. And I just decided that I was, I was done. Um, so I actually started, to get back in shape, I um, chose one of those at-home workout programs um, because I knew that I needed to rehab my back first because I knew that running was not a good idea at that point in time. I had tried to go out a couple times and run and it just made my back even worse. And so I needed to strengthen my core and do the things that I, you know, would have given to my patient, you know, if a patient came to me with a back problem, I I needed to treat myself like a patient and rehab my back first and strengthen my core and get my body stronger so that I could build that base and then, you know, hopefully get back into running. But at the beginning, I really didn't have that interest in running um, right away. I just really was enjoying this um, strength program that I was doing. It was kind of a fusion of Pilates and yoga. I was really loving like the instructor and just the feeling that I was having, like I was just getting stronger and I started feeling more confident and feeling better about myself. And then I did a couple cycles of that program and was feeling good. And um, and then like in October of last year, I mean, I can't believe it's only been a year. I know. When we were talking about yeah. this and we figured out that this has only been a year, it's Isn't kind of crazy? crazy how far we've come here. Right? So crazy. So in October of last year, I was like, okay, well, what if I started running again? Like, you know, it might be, might be a good idea for me to start running again. And so I, I literally started back out with like, a mile and a half, you know, like I, I mean, went out it had for been a, a mile long and a half. time. It had been a really long time since yeah. you'd gone for a run. Right. And you were in good shape because I mean, you'd been doing this strength stuff mm-hmm. pretty solid cause you loved it. So yeah. you were going at it for like eight, six nine days months. a week, pretty much. Yeah. Right. So you were in great shape. You just running wasn't your thing at the time. You right. wanted to get super strong and take control. Yeah. And I mean, it totally changed you. It did. And, and then, so then in October I started running again and I started running for a couple of weeks and I decided, hey, like maybe I should do like a turkey trot and just kind of see like I was feeling so strong, um, stronger than I really had ever felt in a, probably my whole life. And um, I was like, let me see what my 5K time would be, you know, just curiosity. Like I was running maybe three days a week at that point in time. And um, so I did the turkey trot last year and I ran like identical time to my previous PR from like a couple of years prior to that. Right. It was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It was so only like, like six weeks of training. Yeah. So six weeks of, of like going from nothing 
and still focusing so much on your strength. Like it wouldn't be how I would design a 5k program. <laughs> no, you didn't. This would not be your design. No, like you were like, I still basically want to strength train roughly every other day. Right. And you still just went out there and, and crushed it on yeah. the 5k. And you were like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, <laughs> you, like you, you're not going to run five or six days a week. I'm just not even sure what to do with you. So it was kind of fun. Cause I was kind of like your Guinea pig. Right. And yeah. I mean, you've done so much of this strength training and put it onto me now to mm-hmm. make sure that, that I'm appropriate really strengthened because I have the total opposite mindset of you. Right. I would much rather just go out and run constantly mm-hmm. and and put strengthening on the back burner. And you like to make sure that you are fully strong right. with running as a complement to it. Yeah. And then, um, so then like, as far as that, then I continued to run after that. And um, I wanted to, so I just, then I was running basically like four days a week and I was still doing my strength training. And then um, there was that fun race, that, the family race that we decided to do in April because the girls were had done like a little kids running club and that was like the race and so we were all going to do this race as a family together which was going to be really fun that was enough it was just really awesome time it was it was it was a super fun day and um so at that race I basically ran only two seconds faster than my previous time at the turkey trot and so I wasn't super happy about that because I felt like I was stronger at that point. So I should have run faster. Right. That's when I suggested maybe you should actually start 5k training. Yeah. And so then you designed that five week program. And so I decided that I was going to run the Memorial Day 5k and and just train for five weeks and and to see how fast I could get. And, um, I dropped two minutes off of my 5k time, which was incredible awesome. like yeah I mean that was just the best feeling crossing that line seeing that time and the time that I ran like in my head was like wow like maybe I'm not a slow runner like maybe I'm actually I could be fast if I tried to be fast like I mean because obviously I mean dropping two minutes is is a ton and it wasn't like I was going from 45 minutes to 43 which I mean even that is great but um you know to go from down like into the 25s for a 5k in my mind to run like an eight minute pace like I mean that's that was fast for me in my brain and and it just kind of like shifted my perspective a bit um I mean I definitely take on the title runner now you know after a half marathon and um the running that I do now I, I definitely do identify as a runner but I I identify myself as a different runner than you still because you know, I still like running as kind of a part of my overall health routine and health lifestyle. Um, whereas you like still put, you know, running as like your number one. And I, I love running and I love what it does for me. I love, um, that it's, it's already, you know, broken down so many barriers that I've already, that I set up for myself. You know, like I told myself I was slow. I told myself I was not a runner. I told myself this and it's like running has kind of helped to break some of those things down. And I've proven to myself that, you know, those were just self limiting beliefs basically. Right. Which then has awesome repercussions in, in real life. Cause it's like, well, what other silly lies am I telling myself yeah. that I'm, I can actually just ignore that. So that just ridiculous thought, Oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's not for me. Why don't I give it a shot? Because yeah. I, I've, I've done this before. I've put up a lie before and made it through to the other side. Yeah. And I think that, you know, running now to me is also a way that I am taking care of myself. You know, we talk about that that old um, adage of, you know, putting on your own oxygen mask first and running and my workout schedule is a way for me to do that because I have learned that I show up as my best self if I'm taking care of myself. Like in those years that I was not taking care of myself, I know that I wasn't being the best mom that I could be. I thought I was at the time because I thought, you know, I'm sacrificing all of this other stuff in my life just to to be with my kids and to spend time with my kids and I'm not doing these other things. But now I realize that I am a much better mom. I'm a much better wife. I'm much more patient um, and calm and kinder if I exercise every day. I mean, and you know, not that I exercise every single day. I mean, sometimes life gets in the way, but I plan to exercise every day, even if it's only for 15 or 20 minutes. You know, I have that exercise and I take that time for myself. as just a way to like 
burn off some steam or just to be by myself for a little bit and you know um the girls know like if mommy's working out like leave her alone like that's one thing i think that we've kind of made clear like mommy needs this time for herself and then i'm all yours Right. And they're old enough now that they really accept it. And they, there's no clinging and crying. There's no, let mommy have her time right. because when she comes back after, after working out, mommy's going to be happier. Yeah. Mommy's going to be a much, much better mommy Yeah, after this workout. Right. Right. And they also like it when I'm like, Oh, you can guys go watch TV. Mommy needs to work out. And they're like, yay. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. Also. Yeah. So, you know, I, I basically went from someone who hated running and like dreaded it to now um, I love running, you know. You're welcome. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I do. I love running now because I love what it has done for me. Um, I love what it has shown me and proven to me, you know, on like over the last 10 years, you know, it's been... Um, a journey, but it's been awesome because it's shown me that I'm, you know, stronger than I once thought I was. I'm able to do things that I thought impossible. Like if you would have told me that I would have run a half marathon when I was, you know, like if you told me that when I was in high school, I would have like laughed in your face. <laughs> oh, oh like, definitely. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in the middle of liners, right. by the way, you're going to run a half. Yeah. Okay. 13 miles, you know, so, but you know, but I've, I've done those things now and, and running helped me to do that. And running has showed, you know, sh- showed me that like, I'm so much more than I thought that I was. And that really gets me excited because it also makes me think like, what more can I do? You know, what more can I push my body to do? What more can I push myself to do in my life um, that I once maybe thought I was incapable of? Yeah. So when are you doing the next half marathon? (laughs) Yeah, I do actually want, I actually do want to like maybe this spring. um, I think, I think it's it's time for number two. I know the two of us really need to sit down with a race calendar and figure out what we're doing from here. For sure. For sure. So, I mean, that's kind of my running journey from hating running to now loving running and everything in between. Um, So hopefully, you know, hopefully people kind of connected to some part of that story. Oh, it's a great story. People definitely connected. And there's so many lessons that you learned about the benefits and and what you can gain by being a runner. I think think a lot of people were able to gain something from this. Hopefully you guys found this this podcast informative, helpful, you connected. Um, If you did, please make sure that you click to subscribe so you get all of our future podcasts. Um, Make sure... That if you really liked it, you go out of your way. Please leave us a review. We read them all. That would be awesome. Oh, that would be the best. And we will enjoy and catch you guys on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thanks.